Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Overlord Lore reaction. Now, this time we'll be checking out the German channel, obviously. I cannot pronounce that name as usual. I do apologize for that. But uh, I just actually uploaded a reaction to the Overlord stats. Uh, so this is going to be a bit different. I thought, you know what, it's going to be still Overlord again, but then it's a bit different. It's much more uh, lore, lore related instead of these fun facts uh, that we see from the stats channel. And I just looked through the channel and the only thing that really interested me right away was the Overlord Volume 16, the battles explained. The Zeshi versus uh, Mare, Einzulgurn versus Elf King, and even some some of the volumes explained basically some of the situations and, uh, and battles and uh, in their monologue, all of these explains. It, it, I really want to check those out because here's the thing. I might have missed out some important details, especially in the battles. And I just want to double check it again. So for now, I, I hate, I, to be honest, uh, I'll, say, I'll say this now. Volume 15 was fucking boring as fuck. It was boring as fuck. I'm just saying. Volume 16 was good though. But Volume 15, oh my fucking god. Sure, it was a build up towards Volume 16. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go with the fact, uh, go, go with the saying that, ah, oh, okay, but shit, but the other one's good. But again, I'm not gonna also try and how do I say make Overlord the the uh, Overlord some of the Overlord sound good, even though there are some actual shit shit story sometimes. Even though there's a lot of shit story, I'm not gonna make it because I'm a fanboy. I'm a huge fanboy, even if something is shit. I'm not like one of those. For example, I think biggest example I can give is like those Apple fans, uh, iPhone fans. Wow, it's the same mobile. It's the same phone, just a bit different, and it's expensive as hell. People will say it's still good because even though it's actually shit, because they just love the sh the love just lo they just love it. Okay, I ramble on a little bit and I mumble a lot, so I do apologize for that. But I hope you understand. It doesn't mean I hate the I hate Overlord uh, Volume Fifteen whatsoever. But I thought it was very fucking boring compared to uh, Volume Sixteen and some of the other volumes. One hundred percent. I think there are some other volumes that was probably more boring than Volume Fifteen. I could be wrong, but I'm, so far, Volume 15 so far has been the most boring for me. It's because I really fucking hated the elf shit. The elf uh, village BS. So they, the, they fucking pissed me off. I just wish Einstein literally ob obliterated them. It was the Dark Elves, my bad, not the elves. Uh, the Dark Elves oh, it was so fucking annoying. Just I wish he could just fucking wipe them out. But that just me. Again, that just me. I hope you guys understand what I mean. And don't lash out at me for talking negatively about uh, Overlord the volume. <laughs> but anyway, let's just get into the video. As usual, I will link the original video in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. But for now, let's get into the video. Uh, let's have some some titles. Hello and welcome to another Overlord lore video. And today, we are going to take a look at the fight of Eins Olgon against the Elf King. Wow, three minutes but before we're going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel as well as all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. Now with that said, let's get into the setup of the fight. Einzulgon as well as Aura and Mare went inside the elf capital in the Great Forest of Evasha in order to kill Steel. Eins wanted to prevent the theocracy from gaining all Heinz. the elvish- I love the fucking auto-translation, Heinz the Ketchup. <laughs> artifacts and magic items yeah, to that the it. country could hold. Now back then, Eins thought of the elvish treasures as something more on the line of Razor Edge, a legendary blade that indeed could cut him, and possibly even world class stuff. items. And since the theocracy could potentially attack the Sorcerer Kingdom, he wanted to ensure that they wouldn't get any additional options so once war Absolutely was declared. So and he most certainly did not thought that he would find not only a part of the treasures of other players, namely the items of one of the eight Greek kings, the elvish leader, Wait, what, what? that he would find once war was declared. And he most certainly did not thought that he would find not only a part of the treasures of other players, namely the items of one of the eight Greek kings, yeah, I know, because the Elf King is basically the son of uh, of one of the uh, Eight Great Kings, which was also an Elf, as somebody confirmed that to me in the comments, so thank you for that, by the way. But, what? 
I don't think he actually got any items whatsoever. I think it was all shit. Yes. He didn't the get a single elvish ship. leader that gave his items to his son, the Elf King, yeah, or Dacam Hugin, he as he was named. But he also did not think that he would meet someone like Dacam in the capital city. Now, while Einzulgon, Aure and Mare infiltrated the Elf capital, and even the palace successfully, only Einzulgon has disguised himself with perfect unknowable, while Aure and Mare were out in the open. But as soon as the bedchamber of the Elf King was reached, the Elf Twins were caught by the Elf King, he didn't see who eyes, was initially I very surprised, because A, the Elf Boy was wearing a dress, that of an Elf Girl, and B, because he could not recall that he had bedded a Dark Elf Some of you guys might- I, I love the memes how when the Elf King might meet Mare, he might think, oh shit, that's a girl, I'm gonna start mating with, him, with her. But that actually he did realize on spot, on sight, he knew that Mari was actually a boy. It was it, it was a it was a anticlimactic, but nonetheless, it was okay. But nonetheless, he suspected them because that he had bedded a dark elf woman. But nonetheless, because he could not recall that he had bedded a dark elf woman. But nonetheless, he suspected them being simply his grandchildren. Meanwhile, oh, yeah, Einz, true. while still maintaining perfect and noble, was buffing himself more and more, until his dead reflexes kicked in. See, the Elf King was... Yes, his fucking dead reflexes. He was so disgusted by how uh, fucking Dason was talking about reproduction and creating, uh, creating stronger, basically. Elves. He was so fucking disgusted by it. he just literally fucking punched the Elf King out of fucking nowhere. I love that scene so much. Stunned that finally his power has manifested in what he or thought were his grandchildren. Scene. So he was of the opinion that his power might have skipped a generation. But now that he had found a way to make strong offspring, he desired to make even more strong offspring with the strong offspring. Only if he knew that fucking girl's grandchildren aren't exactly his grandchildren and they pretty much rival in power to his own fucking father, the Eight Great King, I would assume. Sure, the Eight Great King uh, are players. They were probably fucking OP, so they could have possibly actually 100% defeated Aura. Uh, but not sure about Mari, but it's also possible that they could have defeated Mari as well. But then again, they don't know how her power, so their power works, but the same could be said for Aura and Mari. They don't know how his power works. And as I'm soon as these words the came out over his lips, a punch them. shoved them right back in and flung the Elf King at the back of his bed so chamber. Fucking satisfying. I Einz had left his perfect and noble and stopped buffing himself to punch the guy that wanted to take liberties with Aura and Mare. The Elf King, still believing that the twins were his children, wanted to assert his dominance by fighting that summoned skeleton of them. Yeah, so he used a summoning of his very own behemoth, the powerful earth elemental. Yeah, behemoth. It was, um, he called it fucking behemoth. <laughs> it was quite funny, but again, it was worthy of its name at the same time. It was basically an earth elemental, which was in its upper level 80s. The ones that Ainz usually casually summons with its staff, like the fire elemental we saw, but the, it was the earth elemental. So it was... A bit interesting to see some of the other elementals instead in the in the show finally appearing. All of them did appear actually in the side story, like, but then again, uh, it was much more in detail this time. They had quickly managed to corner the Sorcerer King, and while Deckham Hugin had felt the impact of Ein's Orgon's punch, he casted Mercy of Shoria Robusta in order to provide a minor self feeling effect. But his spell would also allow him to resist insta-death magic and be revived without level loss, provided that he died by an enemy attack. Oh, that is good. Be revived without level loss, provided that he died by an enemy attack. So Dekem wanted to take no chances, and therefore he held himself back while Behemoth pummeled Einzelgorn's skeletal wards bit by while Behemoth. He wasn't exactly a dumb fuck. He was still very dumb, but he at least was... I would say he was a bit decent in battling the Elf King at least. He was quite decent, I would assume. Uh, sure, he was a bit just overpowered due to his blood uh, from his father, but then again, 
nonetheless, he was quite uh, okay, I think, in terms of power generally. Of Pummelt Einzelgorn skeletal walls, bit by bit. And Hugen found this all very tiresome. Which drive. Yeah, it was. Yeah, how do I say? The fight was a bit too repetitive. I genuinely thought Eins could literally one shot that fucking elemental. Sure, the earth elemental has more defense, I would assume, compared to the fire elemental. But then it felt like Eins was being pushed back in a way, or he was. But in, in reality, I would assume it's because Eins just played very passively. He played very defensively, and he was pretending to be uh, basically a summoner, uh, a summoned creature from Ara and Mare. So, once again, a very underwhelming battle, if I'm honest, but nonetheless, it was quite fun to watch this, or read this at least. But yeah, Overlord battles aren't exactly that overwhelming, like some sort of fucking DBZ, but then again, that's what you should expect in Overlord. It's much more about world building and strategizing and all, strategizing and all, pretty much for sure, I think I, I think I told that every, I told all of that in short, which is world building in general. It's just all about world building. Literally, that's it. Some of the battles are satisfying. Some of the battles are quite shit and boring. Some of the battles are even quite repetitive. So I kind of wish the author would work on that a little bit more. But then again, that's just me. It doesn't really need to be like some sort of fucking DBZ battle whatsoever. Fucking ever. So the, the current, the way, the way that the author draws the battles, or not draws, but Rise the battles is fucking satisfying to me because it makes it unique to Overlord only. But he could, uh, in a way, make it much more. It's hard at the same time because science is very strong. But I guess we're gonna get more of those good stuff later on in the show. And I've said it doesn't really need to be in a way where Ainz have to always face somebody that is equally strong or strong enough just to make the battle interesting. It doesn't need to be. That'll just ruin the writing because you just have to create a random character that is on par with Ainz. So I so far honestly, forget all the things I said. I'm fine with the way the battles are working in in the show. That it was part of the plan. I don't know what the fuck I was See, getting. See, Einz wanted to capture the elf king credit, and Hugen found this all very tiresome. Which, to Einz credit, was part of the plan. See, Einz wanted to capture the elf king, and at this point, a fate worse than death. Yeah, Neuronus, that's the fate, which luckily didn't appear for the Elf King, but it did appear for his child, uh, Zeshi. <laughs> yeah, but the battle is basically, hey, skeleton wall, skeleton wall, skeleton wall, that's it. I think there was a meme about it, it was fucking funny. And he partially succeeded, but I'm again getting ahead of myself, for Eins had easily more than enough mana to win a battle of attrition against the Elf King. Obviously. But he didn't want to show his strength right away. He wanted to lure the Elf King in a sense of false safety. He wanted him to run out of mana so that he couldn't teleport away easily. It was smart. It was smart on Ayn's part. Uh, sadly, we know how it happened in the end. He just kind of died because he, is, he actually somehow managed to escape and bewildered Ayn's because of his... Well, will will to live basically his will to live and pretty much I would assume I'm gonna say it's uh, you could say it's fear but it was mainly his survival instinct just wanting to survive that bewildered Eins so much that actually Eins uh, uh, <laughs> he somehow managed to escape Eins's crest for a while and sure Ara and Mari was about to catch up to him but then I think it was Mari yeah he sent Mari to catch up to him. Which we find later on that he 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 got killed by Zeshi, and then the Zeshi between the Zeshi fight between Mare happens, which was very fun as well to read. Oh, fight him and his magical effects off, and by making the Elf King think that he was winning, he also wanted to prevent him from even thinking about fleeing. And thirdly, and most importantly, he wanted him to be weak so that he could be captured without risking too much in a serious fight. Yeah. So while the Elf King was playing Crusader Kings, with all of this <laughs> weird incestuous power politics, Eins was playing Pokemon. <laughs> my fucking god, he really did, he really dissed my man like this. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> He's his game as reference. Oh no. What's wrong with Crusader Kings? I think it's fine. It's almost like civilization, isn't it? I could be wrong. And once he bathed himself and the Elf King in a torrent of rain, once the Elf King lost his cool, 
and most of his mana reserves. Yes. Ein Sogon decided to get serious and used reality slash in order to severely wound the elf king, who at this point was shocked and had a mental breakdown. Yeah. And was for the first time in probably centuries scared for his very life. Of course, his ego was too fucking to high, flee, obviously. Only for the elf king to trigger the mines Eins had planted earlier, which had deeply hurt him. Broke his fucking and legs. And burned his feet. But to his credit, the elf king still was able to run afterwards, despite being peppered with spells such as Time Storm yeah. and being severely hurt by Ein Sulgon's spells. His survival so he, was too strong. Or rather the items he had inherited still were powerful enough to resist Ein Sulgon's magic in his badly weakened state so that the Elf King could... I th wait, actually, I'm sorry for pausing again, but I think Ein's eventually did uh, get, get all the items that was uh, that Elf King was wearing after uh, capturing Zeshi at the same time. I'm pretty sure he did because Ainz is smart and I think he left the open portal open after they brought after actually they took Zeshi out back to Nazari. Uh, he sent somebody else to clean the basically the treasury of the elf capital. I think to run away. But of course, this didn't meant that Ainz was letting him go. The weakened elf king wasn't he going was to be much of a threat. But he was, he, was now shot, that he but was he out of mana. So he and Aura could spend a brief amount of time plundering the treasury vault of the royal palace. Yes. And therefore, he had sent Mare after the already bleeding elf king. True. Not sadly, this. Mare would have been the knight his prize, for the elf king ran into no other than Zeshi Zetsumai herself. Of course, And I Auntie remember. Lena at this point was fueled by spite and vanity what? herself. And Auntie Lena at this point was fueled by spite and vengeance. Where the fuck is and Auntie Lena at this point... Oh, Auntie Lena, that's her second name of Zeshi. That, fuck me. I didn't know her name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's was this. Fueled I by think the last name of Zeshi. That's to me. Yeah. Bite and vengeance. And protected by her armor. And equipped with the weapon of the six great gods themselves. Sorshana. For the first so time the since the despicable eight great kings had killed Sorshana. A member of the few despicable eight great kings had killed Sorshana. A member of the theocracy would be able to exact revenge by killing off the only known remaining offspring of them. Oh yes. Only to let yourself be captured by Ainz and you didn't even fucking kill the offspring by yourself. He was already fucking on death's door. Thus ending their bloodline. While that of the six great gods still endures in this world. Because Bro, while I don't think we need to worry about the offsprings of the fucking eight Greek kings. We have more fucking issues to deal at, at hand. The elf king had sired many offsprings. The only one close to his power. And quite literally was surpassed Zeshi. it. Was Zeshi herself. True. Who just and Aura and Mare was briefly mistaken for one of the elf king's concubines. And Mare Wait, what? Was... Zeshi herself, who just and our and Mare was briefly mistaken for one of the Elf King's concubines, only for her to humiliatingly crush the Elf King. The only thing that was I'm sorry. briefly mistaken I'm not, I'm not for one of the herself, part. who just and our and Mare was briefly mistaken for one of the Elf King's concubines, only for her to humiliatingly crush the Elf King. Oh yes, 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 yes. I remember this. And he also, I think, killed a lot of a lot of some a lot of Zeshi also at the same time killed some was it the concubines or some female elves at the same time in a room? I think this was before he met the elf king though. The only thing that sets Zeshi off was these deep, deep cuts in the elf king's body. But that still did not save him from being deep The only thing that sets Zeshi off was these Deep, deep cuts in the Elf King's body. But that still did not save him from being literally grinded to death under Zeshi's iron boot. Just Welcome. like Ein Sulgon had crushed Clementine, thus taking revenge on behalf of the Swords of Darkness, Zeshi made the Elf King vomit forth his own lung, thus taking revenge for her country and avenging her traumatic childhood. Yeah, not for her mother, by the way. Yeah, because I don't think she, Zeshi was a big fan of her mother whatsoever. I think, is, is Zeshi's mother dead, by the way? Somebody confirm for that. 
I don't think it's been confirmed whatsoever. I don't but know, just I don't as the Elf King stopped her. breathing, Zeshu was confronted with yet another Elven adversary. Mare has scout up to the Elf King, or rather, what was left of him, only to then be attacked by Zeshi. And how this battle went will be the topic for another video. For today, we'll check that this out is 100%. it. And I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash Dash Dash. Are Woo! Okay, that was very fucking fun to watch. I love this. It refreshed my mind. And I'm sorry for the fucking long ass reaction. We, It's 20 minutes already. I am so fucking sorry for that. But then again, I mumbled all right, random shit, so you can probably just skip through that and just watch the reaction whenever the video is on. I mumbled a lot of random shit, so I do apologize for that. But as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the reaction itself at the same time. And be sure to check out the original channel, the original video and the creators channel just to support them because they really do deserve it. Uh, they mainly make Overlord videos, uh, but they do make some other videos as well, which are quite very interesting. Sometimes even game ones, uh, like the Malign from Elder Ring. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. For now. Okay, I think I need to learn a new English word that is other than for now. For now, or without, without further ado. For now, without further ado. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it, it, I've been using it so much, it's, it's a bit hard to get rid of. But I guess, <laughs> I was about to say it again. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys uh, for watching. And I hope to see you again all next time. Goodbye, everybody.